Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific in New York and the creator of the Dr. Destroyer book and the Orgo Man products. I am here with mathematician Louis Blois, who is going to go over the new type of questions seen on the DAT and the OAT exam. All right, Professor, show us what you got. Okay, this is the type of press, uh, question of statement evaluation. You're given two statements and you're asked a question. And here is what the uh, choices are. Choice A, the statement one is alone sufficient to answer the question, but statement two alone is not. Choice B, statement two alone is sufficient, but statement one alone is not. Choice C, both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient. Choice D, each statement alone is sufficient. And finally, choice E, statements one and two together are not sufficient. So let's see what we have here in this problem. Let's read the question that we have to try to evaluate. Is the two digit positive number P a prime number? And let's review the definition of a prime number. It's a number that can only be divided by itself in one, or a number that cannot be expressed as the product of two or more smaller numbers. Three, five, seven, 11 prime numbers. Okay, here's the information we're given. Statement one, P minus two and P plus two are prime. Two integers to the left and two integers to the right are prime. And statement two is P minus four and P plus four are prime. How are we going to evaluate the primeness or not primeness of P using this information? Well, believe it or not, the secret is lies in the three times table. It's like a filter for all uh, non-primes. Now, in the three times table, every third number on the number line is a multiple of three. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I just wrote some two-digit numbers on top of this little uh, diagram here. The values of m are the multiples of three. They're the ones that cannot be prime. And the numbers in between, I've just marked as x. We're going to think more abstractly and regard those as the possible prime numbers. Okay, so the numbers labeled m are multiples of three. Two-digit numbers, they cannot be prime. Let's take a look at statement one. P minus two and P plus two are prime. Well, there are three possible categories of numbers that P could fall into. It could be a multiple of three, one more than a multiple of three, or two more than a multiple of three. Let's examine each case. What if P is a multiple of three? P plus two and P minus two, two to the right and two to the left. They're both X's. Remember we said that X's could be primes. So that means in that judgment, P cannot be prime, P has to be a multiple of three, all right? So let's see if we can unambiguously decide the matter if P is one more than a multiple of three. Let's look two to the right and two to the left. Well, what do we have here? The number that's two to the right has to be a multiple of three. That defies the, 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 uh, the protocol of statement one. So P cannot be one more than a multiple of three. What about if P is two more than a multiple of three? Okay, let's look at two numbers to the right. That could be a prime or two numbers to the left. Two numbers to the left is a multiple of three. So that defies the statement that, uh, that is described in statement one. So therefore, the only possibility here is if P plus two and P minus two are prime, P has to be a multiple of three. So I can answer the question with state, statement one. Is P a, a prime number? The answer is categorically no. Okay, so that takes care of that. The answer would be choice A. But let's look at statement two. Let's see what statement two tells us. P minus four and P plus four are prime. Well, we're looking at the same choice of numbers, right? Same choice of numbers. P can either be a multiple of three, one more than a multiple of three, or two more than a multiple of three. Let's see what happens. So let's say that P is a multiple of three. Let's look at four numbers to the right. One, two, three, and that would be an X. And four numbers to the left, one, two, three, four. So if P is a multiple of three, four numbers to the right and four numbers to the left, they very well could be prime, okay? But P itself is not prime. Now let's take a look at the second of the three cases that P is one more 
then a multiple of three. Let's look at four to the right, one, two, three, four, and four to the left, one, two, three, four, which would be n, okay? So four numbers to the left cannot be a prime, all right? So that means that p cannot be one more than a multiple of three. And finally, the last case to examine is if p is two more than a multiple of three. Let's look at four numbers to the left, one, two, three, four. Yes, it could be prime, and to the right, one, two, three, four. No, that number to the right, four to the right, cannot be prime. So, from statement two alone, the only possible value that p could be is a multiple of three. That's the only way we can find prime symmetrically distributed, four to the left and four to the right. So that means that either one of these statements on its own can answer the question. So therefore, if we look at our original uh, choices, the choice, the answer is choice D. Each statement alone is sufficient to answer the question, P is not a prime number. All right, thank you very much, Professor Blois. Problems like this made me want to go into organic chemistry. Oh, yeah. My head is spinning. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Not an easy problem. I no. thought that was yeah, yeah, a little, little tricky. That was a yeah. tricky problem, a little, a little tougher than doing fractions and decimals. Yes, absolutely. All right, study hard, guys. Good luck to you. See you in study group. Bye-bye.